So this video is going to take us through the process of using the built-in energy analysis within Revit 2016. So to use that, you, you typically want to do a few things to prep your model to make sure it's ready for this um, use. Um, in this case, we have a more advanced model. So we are actually going to run the analysis using the building M, um, elements and not you run it on a mass. If you want to run this kind of analysis just very conceptually when you're first designing, you can make a mass in the shape that you want, add floors, and run the test on it that way. But in this case, we have a building, we have rooms. We're going to try and test it this way and get more accurate results. Um, so a few things. In your floor plans, make sure you've added rooms to all of your spaces that you're going to test. Along with that, make sure in your, in your uh, architecture tab and room and area, your area and volume uh, calculations are set to area and volumes. Um, and then you can, of course, change the way it, it uh, reads the, the rooms in the space in relationship to the walls, but this is the most important. We need to get the volumes right to get the um, analysis right. The next step to this is to make a section through the building here. You can see my section. Just double click on that. That shows the interior fill of the rooms. And I'll, I'll tell you how to do that. To do that, you go to View, Visibility Graphics, scroll down the R's, Rooms, Expand, and make sure your interior fill is on. And what this does is typically, when you place a room, I'll show you what it's normally. When you typically place a room, such as this one, it's probably going to be like that. And that's a problem when you're running tests on the analysis. So if you find any rooms like that, as long as you have area and volume turned on, you can pull them up. And it actually won't go into this room because it's stopping at this floor because that floor is room bounding. And the properties of that floor is room bounding. Same thing with walls. So if you ever find a room stopping at a place where you don't think it should be stopping, the only things that would stop it are anything that is a room bounding element, such as a floor, a wall, a roof, or a room separating line. That's another thing that can be drawn in a place where you want to stop a room when there's not a wall there, such as a lobby going into a corridor. So what I do once I make this section is I normally will march it through the building now that it's made, move it to next spaces. Make sure that all works out. I think that's a closet, so we will live without that being tested. Yeah, oh, I'm cutting through a wall. Everything seems to be lining up in there. And you can do it a few ways. You can also um, do the exact same thing in your floor plans. I'll give you an example. If you want to make sure your floor plan is covered properly, go to Visibility Graphics or just type VG. And click R to go down to the R's. Rooms, Interior Fill, OK. And it shows you where you're being tested. I'm not testing the closets right now. I'm testing the living spaces. Is there the condition spaces? I can undo and bring that back. And then the other item is to make sure you have some of your materials have thermal properties, especially on your exterior walls. To do that, you can click on your roof type that you're using, edit type. Thermal properties are added in the materials. So if we go to structure and edit, we have these materials in here. And what you want to do is these are already, I already edited these, but so let's say my rigid insulation. Click on the, the, the little gray box in the corner. Rigid insulation. And I have a thermal property to this. If you don't see this button, click on the plus sign, and then you'll see it. 
But if you click on the thermal properties, it'll tell you what it is. It's a um, polyiso board. It's pretty standard um, rigid insulation, good against fire, and also pretty good uh, when it comes to insulation. And it has its R values and, and everything needed with understanding its properties. So let's just see if we can add a material in here so you can see me go through the process. I'm going to see if this metal standing seam roof is actually a metal thermal property. See, it's not because I don't have the little thermal tab showing up. So to add it, we go plus thermal. And there's lots of different metal that you can use. Um, what you, I would normally do is just search and let's say, even though I know aluminum is right on this page, say aluminum. And then you have a lot of different types of aluminum you can select from. So when you have the alloy you like, what you want to do is select it and hit this little button. And then this will update behind the screen hard to see right now but it changes to the right piece of aluminum and this aluminum has lots of properties and this is going to give it its that's our value so what you want to do is march through all of your materials on your main exterior pieces plywood dimensional lumber um, dimensional lumber I think I just have set, set as pine yeah just pine but it has an R value. And what happens is once you apply all these materials, you get a single R value for the entire assembly. So this is adding up all of the R values of all the materials that you use to build this, depending on their thickness, and giving you an R value and a thermal mass. And this will all affect your uh, the analysis. OK, OK. Do that, do that to your exterior walls too. Select all your exterior walls and do it. And you can also select your windows. And uh, you can actually select a lot of them at once. And edit, edit the type. You want to select all of the same type. And you can give it analytical uh, construction properties. So this isn't a great window. It lets a lot of light in. It doesn't have a very good solar heat um, coefficient. But you can control these with these pre-built um, analysis pieces. So if you know you're doing um, a double glazing, but let's say you know it's low E glazing, that's going to make a difference. So you can see my solar heat uh, coefficient went down a significant amount. And it can be even better depending on the different types of glazing you use. So with that, now our, our rooms are set, our um, Exterior cladding and materials are set with the right R values. We're ready to click the buttons to make this work. So go to go to analyze. We're going to go to energy settings so we know what our settings are. And of course, before we do all of this, as with all of these, make sure you're in the right location. This, this house happens to be up in the Poconos. So just make sure you're in the right location. It shows you the closest. Um, Weather stations is actually one really close to this site and um, gives you your property address. So make sure that's set. Make sure your true north is correct. Make sure your building orientation is correct. And then begin your analysis. Energy settings. This, these are some settings you can pick the building type. In this case, it's a single family, but there's a lot of different types in here. These all change the amount of users that would be in the building um, for the testing. So if you're it's testing your cooling system, it's going to be harder to cool the building if you got hundred if you have hundreds of people in there uh, as compared to a single family house with three or four. Um, export complexity. What this is showing is it's showing the rooms. Since this is not an MEP model, we don't worry about spaces. So this is always going to be rooms for us. You can pick on pick up the um, complexity. I'm going to do simple with shading surfaces, but you could do more complex and that would bring out the mullions and everything. But for now, 
simple as shading purposes. Thermal properties, if you have set all of your pieces, click that. Uh, if I mean, if you have set all of your materials that have thermal properties, so you have R values for your walls and roofs, you can set that. If not, it's going to guess at what the average pieces are. So if you didn't set up all that, just don't click this. We can always override it in Green Building Studio separately from this. Um, and then just everything else should be uh, set up. Um, project phase, typically it's an all new construction. If you have um, an existing building, it could test the existing before the new construction is done. Um, the analysis mode that's used building elements, that means you've actually built with walls, rooms, roofs, and you're not building with masses. So um, this would be if you did masses only. This is a hybrid of building elements and conceptual masses. We'll leave these as default. If you are testing masses, you will select the conceptual construction. And this, what this is, is has the different insulation types around the project. So the, your, even your glazing, the floor slabs, and your roof. And you can also, if you're testing masses, set your percentage glazing. And what this is, is, is if you have a big block and you say, I want it to be 40% glazing, it's going to make 40% of all of the facades you're building glass, just for the testing. Set the schedule. This is a home, so it's probably, I would say, 12 hours a day, seven days a week facility. That's when people are going to be there. And th this is very tricky, picking the system that you're going to use. Most of us aren't mechanical engineers, so it would be very difficult to make this selection. Um, in this case, I know it's residential, so I have three to choose from. What I'm going to do is just pick one, and, and if I do multiple options with this, I always keep this the same. Just keep it the same, so uh, it's a base, it doesn't change, and they have the, all of your different options have that same baseline, and the main changes are just your design. So. You don't have too many moving parts to know what is making something better or what is making something worse. So once this is set up, hit OK. And then we're going to run the energy simulation. And it's going to give us this warning. It's going to take a long time. That's OK. We'll create it. And I can always pause it. Well, that actually didn't take that long. Um, I'll hit OK. And what it's going to actually do is you need to make sure you're logged into your Autodesk account. If you don't have one, make one, especially if you, if you have an EDU email address, because then it's all educational. So this is going to create a new Green Building Studio run. And it's going to be, you can give it a name. Hit continue. And what it's going to do is it's going to actually upload the model to the Green Building Studio cloud and run analysis. You can see the process um, happening and the results and compare. You can see right now I'm at 48% from my lake house run. It'll show other options down here from other runs that you've done. So I'm going to let it run until completion and then we will look at the results and see how this is doing energy wise. I just had an alert pop up down here saying that my analysis is done. So let's come here and, and review the results. So what, what the results are is it gives you, tells you what your floor area is, your exterior wall, its assumption for your lighting power, um, power the average person inside, which weather station you've used, um, where the outdoor temperature normally is based on your location. And it also gives you the electrical and fuel costs for your locations. What that is, is um, if we were making a building in New York City compared to Montana, you would have different electrical and fuel costs for those two places. So when it, it's giving you um, uh, yearly costs, it, it wants to be know the cost for that location. 
So this is this is the reason why um, large computer companies put their render farms out in the middle of um, the West, out in Montana, is because they have very cheap electricity, and they go out there for sp that specific reason, because they don't care about their location for computers, they just care about what the computers need, and that's power. Um, what this is, is it gives you your energy use intensity, electricity fuel, so fuel is about uh, 4 BTUs uh, per square foot a year, and uh, electricity it's about 17 kilowatt hours per square foot per year so and then a total and this is your total building uh, energy use this one this, this is important because this this one is saying how much energy you're using without putting a dollar amount to it because we really just care about lowering energy use not necessarily always lowering costs um, and then it goes through all of its assumptions. So fuel assumption, electricity consumption, annual energy costs. It's assuming it's going to use 93% electricity and 7% fuel. It normally, and then it tells you what it's using the fuel for, and it's saying for domestic hot water. This is all probably based off of the system I selected for your for the MEP. Obviously, you can select different systems if you have a good idea of what you want to pick. Um, energy use electricity, it's telling you what it's going to be. Most of it, 85%, is the heating and cooling of the, the building. 9% uh, is lighting and 6% miscellaneous equipment. This is showing... Um, oops. This is showing how your heating load is working. Uh, where, where, are we where are we losing pieces? A lot of it's going out through the, the window. Um, we're gaining some heat from the window solar. That's why it's going positive in the BTUs there. Um, probably gaining a sliver of heat from occupants and lights. But then we're losing a lot of heat through our windows, so our windows aren't doing so great. And some heat through our walls. And then it's the same thing in cooling. So cooling, we're gaining a lot of heat from our windows, so it's, it's, we're fighting to offset that. Fuel consumption, again, we're all, with this HVAC we've selected, we're only using fuel for hot water, so that's going to be fairly consistent. Um, electricity, just depends on the amount of cooling. Since it's an all-electric system, we do a lot more in this location heating it than we do cooling it in the summer. And then the, there's some good information down here on the bottom that regardless of what you're doing with your project, this is important. This is not project related. This is your just location related. So this is your wind rows telling you the wind speed and what locations it's coming from. This is the frequency when it's coming, um, how many hours it's coming from different directions. But these ones are nice. These, um, when the monthly wind roses, will show you that same frequency, but for the different months, and it's showing you the intensity of the, the the wind and how many hours it is. So if you're looking at some kind of wind um, uh, energy, these would really help you understand when your good months are going to be. And then just some more typical um, design data based specifically off of the site, not off of your building. This, is, this will always be the same for any building, all of these charts. And that is the basic setup for um, just running quick energy analysis within Revit. You can always come back and print your report or export it as a PDF and save this report and all of the data. And um, it will also save a copy in here. So when you need to compare, you can select two different pieces and click Compare. They have to be in the same project, but then you can select them, have them side by side, and see exactly where the differences are. And that is it for the energy analysis portion of this.